Somebody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spirit. Move Move. in me. me. Holy Spirit. Spirit. I feel you tonight. Holy Spirit, move in me. Y'all feel God tonight? Lift your hands like this and let's sing it together. Say, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. I want to hear you. Let me walk. Sing it out. Take me deep. Than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be the stronger. Spirit, lead me, sing it. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Now, after that holy moment right there, I want you to put that picture up that I asked for tonight. (laughs) Now, that's my dog. We call her Pepe. Her name's Palin. Everybody say Pepe. Pepe. Now, Pepe, Palin, is wearing a tutu. Everybody say, that's cute, that's cute. But let me tell you what. Even with that tutu on, and she looks real cute, that dog still eats roaches. Even with that tutu on, and she looks real dressed up, and she looks real cute, that dog still likes to lick people's bare feet. I love her, but she's a dog. Even though she's got that tutu on, she still eats food off the floor. She still breathes like a pig. I don't know if you've ever heard a French bulldog breathe. At, yes. She still breathes. And when she breathes, she'll just blow snot on people. So I have first time, you know, I have people over at my house, they're guests, and she'll just come up and just blow snot right on their leg. Because it doesn't matter if you put a tutu on a dog, it's still a dog. And so... You can call yourself a Christian and put on a title, but if you don't act like Jesus, I'm already going deep tonight. Are y'all okay if the spirit moves real quick? Because you can call yourself a Christian and you can even come to Christ for the nations and you can put a tutu on your spirit, but if God has not transformed you from the inside out, you're still a sinner. That dog is cute in a tutu, but it's still a dog. Y'all can take that down. She's too cute. Everybody going to be looking at her all night. You can't dress up being a sinner. I've tried. So you'll try to act like a Christian. How many of you have ever tried to act like a Christian? Like, I like how y'all telling the truth. Like, man, I, I, I acted. And so... You are, Miss Connie, did you see my picture? Y'all put the picture back up. I want Miss Connie to see. If this is just for Miss Connie, I want her to see my dog. That's my dog right there. (laughs) That's Palin, and we're talking about, even though she in a tutu, she's still a dog because you can't dress up the truth. Okay, so you can take it back down. Sometimes you have people. And when they come into the church or they come into Christ for the nations, especially here. And so you're around like these leaders and you're around all these people. And so you'll be and you're like, spirit lead me where my church. You're crying. You're snot crying. That's the real cry. Sniffles ain't the real cry. You're crying. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And then you leave and we're still cussing. Now, I know y'all are young, but I know what's on TV for y'all. I know you're young, but I know the hashtags made for y'all. I know you're young, but I know what they're trying to broadcast to you. So I know what I'm talking about. Y'all aren't too young for the truth of God. 
so I'm going to bring it. You can dress up Christianity, but if it, is, if it isn't real, it isn't real. And the only way that Christianity becomes real is when the spirit of the living God comes inside of you. So last night, some of you came up, a lot of you came up, and you said, I want to know God. And I believe you. And a lot of you came up last night, and you said, I want to go right now and do what God has called me to do. And I believe you. But I also believe and know in my heart that if you don't have the spirit of the living God inside of you, you won't go. And if you don't have the spirit of the living God inside of you, you won't know God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Acts that Peter and John had just healed a man. The power of God touched him. And he got up. He had been paralyzed. And he gets up and he's moving around. And they're proclaiming the name of Jesus. And they take him into court. They went to court for loving Jesus and doing miracles. So they take him into court, and Peter says boldly, in Acts 4.13, Peter says boldly, Jesus is the only reason that this miracle was done, and Jesus is Lord. And it says that the people that brought them into court and the very people that were against them were amazed because they could see they had been with Jesus. My friends, tonight I'm asking you, can anybody tell you've been with Jesus? Because Peter and John healed a man. That's sign number one. But number two, it says they knew they were uneducated. And they were untrained. They had no ability to have that much power and grace and love and peace and joy. So they said, we know he's been, they've been with Jesus. Can anybody tell that you've been with Jesus? They should be able to. I'm not asking you, can they tell you've been to church? I'm not asking you, can they tell you came to camp? I'm asking you, can they tell you've been with the living God? Because there are signs following those that have been with the living God. And there are signs and wonders following those that are filled with the spirit of the living God. Y'all digging it? Then say, I'm digging it. I like it. Do I have to do the? Okay. So, when you, <laughs> when you come to know God. Like many of you said you wanted to. When you come to know God, people ought to know about it. They ought to be able to see it in your life. Amen. And it ought to be amazing. Let me tell you what so many people today are trying to be. And many people your age, you're trying to be amazing. That's why when you take selfies, y'all put like, you know, hashtag no filter. But, you know, you, you went out to the sunlight, you put all kind of makeup on, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. you got to find the one that makes you look skinny, cute. Come on, somebody. Don't act like you don't know that I'm telling the truth. Boys, too, y'all start flexing. You're like, out the gym, no flex, just natural. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. And so what you're trying to do is be amazing. You're trying. So you do your hair a certain way, and you may talk a certain way, and you may whip, and you may nay nay, and you may do all kind of things to be amazing. But there is no way to be amazing unless the amazing one is living inside of you. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it's a tutu on a dog. And you look cute, but you still eat roaches. And you look cute, but you still blow snot out your nose with guests. And you look cute, but you still lick people's toes. I'm preaching. Because I've tried to act like a Christian. But you can't act like a Christian. You just got to be one. And the only way to be one is to be with the living God. That's the only thing that makes me real. I'm real about my Christian life. 
I'm real about Christ. I don't leave here and cuss people out. I'm telling the truth. I don't leave here and fight. I don't leave here and I, I try to never leave church and then be another person outside of it. Amen. And the reason that's possible is because when it starts rising up and you're about ready to backslap somebody with both hands like I talked about Moses last night, the spirit of God says, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is not necessary. Now, my angels are Spanish, but not the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit speaks all languages. It's really powerful. And so, but I get, you know, you're about ready. You're whoo, about to back slap that one right there. And they come, and the Holy Spirit, no, 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 no. And you start thinking about saying things that you know better than to say, and it's about to come out, and the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 no. That's not in the kingdom. One day we're going to go to the kingdom, and there's certain words you're not ever going to hear. Why would I practice saying them here? We better move from our vocabulary what's not even going to be in heaven now. Because then you're going to get to heaven and be like silent because you don't know how to talk. Because the words you know won't come out because they're not allowed. So you're like. <laughs> you don't know what to say. We better practice the kingdom now. The only way to practice it, though, is to have God in you. And if you know your word, he's already there. And if you know your word, he's been there since before you were born. He was already in you. That blows my mind. But it's truth. When you were born, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, all of eternity was already in you. So God's already living in you. But the question is, will we draw him out by inviting a spirit-led life. I don't want to be led by my friends. I don't want to be led by my family, although it's a great family. I don't want to be led by other people. I sure don't want to be led by the news. I sure don't want to be led by Nickelodeon. I sure don't want to be led by late night TV. I sure don't want to be led by hashtag no filter, hashtag Beyonce, hashtag one Direction, hashtag, I don't know, hashtag, hashtag, LeBron James. <laughs> I don't want to be led by this world. I want to be led by the spirit of the living God. So when people look at me, they don't see a dog in a tutu, but they see God only. And then they say, "Whoa, you're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. And they said, you're like the, the girl last night, remember I'm in the middle preaching. She goes, I like you. And I realized right on the spot, no, you don't like me, baby. You like the God in me. That's a sign that you're amazing. I don't want to be like amazing. Three snaps, a head roll, twerk, twerk, whatever, hashtag, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, look at all my likes. I don't want to be amazing like that. I want to be amazing like miraculous. I want to be amazing like part the seas and watch God's people walk through. I want to be amazing like watch the Holy Spirit change my life. Watch me not act like this world. Watch all the terror and all the fear, but watch my peace. Watch them wave their flag of terrorism and watch me raise a standard up against it. Watch them hate people. Watch them hate black people and white people and hate Mexican people and hate Asian people. And watch me take a selfie with all the people and post it on my Insta, okay? Because there's something different. Remember last night, a lot of people are like this. But Christians are like this because something's a little bit different. So when the world's talking filth, you're not. And when the world's talking fear, you're not. And when Christians are sinning, you're not. And when people are silent, you're not. And when people are hungry, you won't tolerate it. 
you got to give them food. And when people are dying in their sin, you won't tolerate it. You got to let your friends know. You got to do it because there's just something different. <laughs> the Bible says in Acts 1, get your Bibles out if you got them. The Bible says these are swords. Raise them up. Let's let hell see them tonight. Raise them up. Let hell see them. Go ahead. Shout while you let hell see them. This is a. You just made a declaration on hell like you ain't welcome here, baby. You ain't welcome. Acts 1. Eight. Listen to this. Preteens, because this is going to be what makes you amazing. This is going to be what changes your life. This is going to be the real deal for you. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power. You will receive what? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in, to the ends of the earth. You will receive what? What? So let me tell you when I get around people how I know they've been with God. They have power. Amen. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be powerful? Now, I don't mean powerful in the sense of I tell people what to do and they do it. You know what I'm saying? You go when I say go. Tell somebody to tell them that I said that. Do it. Or else. That's not the power that I'm talking about. I'm talking about power to operate in the miraculous. I'm talking about power that when you have family members dying with cancer and you would speak the name of Jesus over the name of cancer, the cancer would leave. I have a friend, he's watching at home tonight back in Lamarck tonight, Lamarck, Texas, where we still ride horses. And so he's watching back. He had stage four lung cancer. Should have died. Only had a period of time to live. They told the whole thing. I came into the hospital room. His eyes were yellow. His skin was yellow. It was like death. I felt the spirit of death. I've never seen anything like it. Stage four lung cancer. He's already been told, you going to die. And my heart, when I walked in, I just heard God say, I'll do the greatest miracle you have ever seen. Because the spirit of the living God is on the inside of you. Amen. And right then and right there, we prayed. And our church prayed. And our families prayed. And stage four lung cancer lost. And he just graduated from Bible school two and a half years later. Cancer free. Well, you know, I feel like that's probably just coincidental. You know, uh, I feel like that's just, you know, no, you can't explain that. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. And God does it when his spirit is recognized in a place. If you recognize the power of his spirit then the Spirit will show you his power. And I feel like some of you tonight want to be amazing and not like I get the fame of the world. I don't care anything about that. I get people to know me. Yeah, I want to be amazing. I want people to know who I am. I want people to see me. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you're so amazing they can only see God. That's some kind of amazing. What's up, Nathaniel? 
You still got that word burning in you? Love that guy. And so they said, what about me? Go ahead, let God move. He'll speak to you. And so I'm not talking about amazing the way we think about amazing. I'm talking about amazing beyond your comprehension. I'm talking about God living in you and coming out of you for all of the world to see. When those guys saw Peter and they saw John, they said, I can tell they've been with Jesus, but Jesus wasn't there anymore. Where was Jesus? He had already gone back to heaven. So who do you think they had been with? The Holy Spirit. They said, "Whoa, I can tell they've been with Jesus. And Jesus is in heaven like, whoop, no, they with my spirit. Jesus is in heaven. He done died on the cross, went to hell and resurrected. Y'all should have got pumped about that one right there. He already died on the cross, went into hell, took the keys right on back. Do y'all know this story? Let, let me tell you the story since you clearly don't know it. And so Jesus actually went into hell and took some keys back. That's the funniest story to me that the devil's in there holding on to some keys that don't belong to him. I think about if one of you, what's your name? What? Luana. I like it. Luana, if she takes, she gets my Hummer keys. I drive a black Hummer. Y'all don't try to steal it. And so she gets my Hummer keys, and she comes up to me, and it's like, hey, I have something for you. It's a gift. No, baby girl, that's already mine. The devil had Jesus' keys acting like they belonged to him. No, baby, that was already his. He went into hell and took his keys back. Amen. So he got those keys back out of hell, and then he went and was exalted at the right hand of God. And that's where he is right now listening to me preach, and I think he might like it. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity, Jesus. I love you. Oh, Jesus, I believe you hear Christ for the nations tonight. Jesus, as you're at the right hand of the Father, I believe that you hear us tonight. And God, your spirit is going to move in Jesus' name. Now, that's where Jesus is. So when these guys said, we know they've been with Jesus, what they meant was he, they have been with the spirit of God. The spirit of the living God comes into you. And then church, young church, it ought to come out of you. It ought to come out of you. Because if Christ has truly come into your heart, if God is somebody that you really know, you can no longer be a dog in a tutu. You can no longer be a Christian acting like a Christian, but then in the world and still looking like the world. That's the problem we have to solve. Amen. God doesn't want preteens to love him and act like him in certain settings, but then be out of those settings and act like his enemy. Amen. He wants you to be in the church and act like the church, and then he wants you to go into the world and act like the church. And then he wants you to go into your school and act like the church. And then he wants you to go into your bedroom and act like the church. And then he wants you to get on your YouTube and act like the church. Y'all see I got quiet right there. He wants you to get on your Instagram and act like the church. He wants you to be at lunch with your friends that don't know Jesus and act like the church. He wants you to be on your sports team. And even when you lose, oh, that one spoke to me. I don't like to lose. Act like the church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? God doesn't need you to be two people. I feel like my Spanish angel's about to come out tonight. Listen to me. Excuse me. We do not need two people. We need one person all of the time. Let me tell y'all a story about my grandma. She's in heaven tonight, Julia. 
She's probably enjoying this message with my dad. And so in the kingdom of God, anyway, okay, so my grandma, I bought a bathing suit. She was staying at our house for a little while, and uh, I bought a bathing suit, and it was like a two-piece bathing suit, but it was like, you know, had the full uh, top, and then the bottom came down. It was like a little short. Some, yeah, y'all know what it is. It was like a little skirt. It was, it was really nice and modest, you know. And so I came to her, and I said, oh, Grandma, I just bought a bathing suit. And she went, is it one piece? And I went, oh, no, it's, it's two pieces, but it's like real modest, you know. And she went, oh, it's two pieces. And I said, no, but look at it. I, I took it out, and I put it, also, it's two pieces. So that's two pieces. Okay. And so she didn't tell me I couldn't wear it, but she gave me the, the eyes. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's two pieces. So I didn't wear that one. But what God does not need us to be is two pieces. God needs us to be one piece all the time. All the time. And so tonight, and, and you can help me on the keyboard that uh, – very, very gifted young man can come up and help. Um, but listen to me, preteens. When I was 12 years old, the Holy Spirit of God came into me. And I was never, ever the same. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit came into me. I believed in God as a child. I believed in Jesus as a child. But when I was 12 years old, the Holy Spirit came in. And when the Holy Spirit came in, as a 12-year-old, I began to see miracles from my own hands, from my own mouth. I began to pray prayers, and those prayers were answered because the Spirit of God had come in. And from that time in my life, I started acting different. I started talking different. How many of you would say, I'm just a little different, talking about me? Just, you're just a little different. That's, I love it. I love it. I don't want you to bump into me and be like, oh, she like Tina. She like Bon Cui. Cui. She like Teresa. No, I want to be like Jade with God on the inside of her. And so when the spirit comes in, you're just, thank you so much, you're just a little bit different. When the Spirit comes in, she wrote me a little note. You don't want me to read it out loud? Can I read it out loud? Jade, all caps. I love it, baby girl. I love you. You are the best pastor I have ever had. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Okay. So when the Spirit of God comes in, he transforms you. Y'all know what a transformation is? Y'all have seen, rock, rock, troop, and a car becomes like a fake robot. Sorry, I don't like the movie. Okay, please don't throw popcorn or tomatoes. All right. <laughs> Amen, sister. I got a sister out there. But the car transforms into something totally different. And a butterfly, it goes into a cocoon. And when it goes into the cocoon, it transforms. How many of you know before it was a butterfly, it was a worm? How many of you know before you get Jesus, you were a worm? But then the butterfly time comes. Come on, somebody. Listen to me, preteens. I don't ever want to be a dog in a tutu. I don't. I want to be a child of the most hi God and I want to talk like one and I want to look like one and I want to act like one and I want to touch and change people like I'm one and I want to love people like one guys when the spirit of God is living in you let me tell you something that becomes very evident love love when the Holy Spirit comes in and he's indwelling in you. The Bible says he makes you his home. Oh, he makes your body his home. I remember you. 
and you still gift it. Inside of you, he makes his home. The home needs to be clean. I wouldn't have a guest in my house with roaches crawling around. I wouldn't have guests in my house with the pizza boxes still out with the flies on them. I wouldn't have them come into my house and we ain't got no toilet paper. And we ain't got no toilet. <laughs> I wouldn't have them come into my house and not be prepared for them to be in my house. I wouldn't do that for anybody coming over. I would make sure it's ready. How much more the Holy Spirit how much more God, the Holy Spirit, is God. Three in one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all equal. So it's God living in you. The home has to be clean and ready for God. But this is the best part. The Holy Spirit is what cleans it. He comes in. And he makes it ready. He comes in and he cleans you up. You ain't got to do it. He comes in and he transforms you. He makes the home ready. Then he just begins living there. And you know what I do in my home? I go in and I come out. And I go in and I come out. And I go in and I come out. And you know what the Holy Spirit wants? Don't take the Holy Spirit in and lock him in a bedroom. I don't go in my house and lock myself in. No, I got to come out. The Holy Spirit comes in and my friends, he wants out. He wants out. And he wants to touch. Thank you, young man. He wants to touch your Friends, he wants to touch your neighbors. Remember, God will not send you to the nations if you won't go to your neighbors. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> this one says, I like you. You are nice with two E's. Come on, somebody. Got a double anointing, two E's. And so when God comes in, remember God wants to come out. Amen. When God comes in, he wants to come out. And tonight, God's going to come in. He's going to come in. And he's going to clean the house. And he's going to change and transform the house. And then, my friends, he's going to come out of the house. Then he's going to come back in. And then he's going to come out. And then he's going to come in. And then he's going to come out. And your neighbors are going to know Jesus. And your schools are going to know Jesus. And your parents are going to know Jesus. Do you know when the Spirit of God came in me, to me? My dad, my stepdad that was here last night, he would tell you this story. I was so on fire for the Lord. And he had just married my mom. And uh, they weren't really coming to church. And the Holy Spirit had moved on my heart. And guys, the Holy Spirit is a little bit different. He'll tell you things that are just a little bit different, like hug the ugly person. Go sit with the one nobody likes. That sounds like the Spirit to me. Ooh, that sounds like the Spirit to me. He tells you things a little bit different, like share your food at lunch with that kid that doesn't have it. Give a pair of your shoes away. That sounds like the spirit. Then he'll start giving you so many shoes, all you can do is give them away. The Holy Spirit moved on my heart to clean my closet out and, and give, give it away. Man, I have a lot of clothes, a lot of stuff, and I like my shoes. <laughs> and he moved on me to just give it away. And I was looking at the outfits. I was like, surely he don't mean that one. Put it back. <laughs> this one's ugly. I'll give that one away. Pull it. Up. Surely he don't mean this one. I put it back. And I turned and walked out with, you know, my two little bags of clothes. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, no, 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 no. 
So I go back and we take it all out and give it all away. And I'm like, God, I ain't got no Sunday morning clothes. I'm talking literally the next day people came up. Man, God just told me to bless you. God just told me to give you that. I got new jackets, new shoes, new workout clothes, everything. It was ridiculous. I said, why, why did you, why? What? Oh, I just felt it in my heart. The Holy Spirit's a little bit different. So one morning, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, go into my parents' room. I'm like 13 years old and rip the covers off and tell them, get up, we're going to church. And, man, I went in there, whoop, threw it off. Get up, we're going to church. And they're like, okay. So we all got dressed, and we all went to church. And I don't know if we've missed a Sunday since. <laughs> Guys, when the Holy Spirit is in you, you'll change your dad. You'll change your mom. You'll change stepdad. You'll change stepmom. He'll change the things around you. And when he doesn't change the things around you, he'll change you to be bold and powerful while you're in it. Hallelujah. And so tonight, preteen impact, young men and women of the most high living God, that is who you are. Do you want the Holy Spirit? Do you want the Holy Spirit because when you want God God already wants you so he's going to come amen and so let me tell you a little something about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has his own language he don't talk Texanese he don't talk Christianese. Y'all know what Christianese is? Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. And I say all of it. I speak fluent Christianese, trust me. I text in Christianese. Now, you know that's good. PTL, we even made it short. You know what I'm talking about? GTG. Come on, glory to God, all right? You got to work it all in there. I, I'm fluent in Christianese. And Mexican people, Spanish people sometimes speak Spanish. And Chinese people sometimes speak Chinese. Well, kingdom people have their own language. And so many people act like, huh? What is that that you are speaking? But it's no different than if you came around me and I was speaking Arabic and you're like, what? It's a language that you don't know. But tonight you're going to learn it. And you're going to speak another language. The Holy Spirit has his own language. And it's not a language you have to go to school for. And then you sit there and like learn the nouns. <laughs> I'm so glad. Let me just give God some praise that we don't have to have class for that. Praise you, Jesus. You don't have to go and Learn the nouns and the pronouns, and you don't have to. He comes in, and he literally fills you, and the language comes out. It is the coolest thing in the world. And let me tell you something. It is real. It is real. And the same Holy Spirit that filled the disciples on the day of Pentecost is the same Spirit that will fill you tonight. Lift your hands very respectfully, very respectfully. God is in the house. God is in the house. Say, Holy Spirit. I want you to mean it tonight. I see hunger in some of you guys. Some of you are so hungry. You're like, I don't even really know what you're talking about, Miss Jade, but I'm hungry for it. I want it. That's all you need is to be hungry for God. Lift your hands. Say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. 
I know you're already here because your word says you never leave us and you never forsake us. So you're already here and you're ready to move and you're ready to make your home Keep your hands lifted. Eyes closed. Don't look at me. I have nothing for you tonight. God has got it all. Close your eyes. Let me invite the worship leaders to come. Very reverently, very respectfully, we're going to worship the Lord. Hands lifted and eyes closed. Spirit, hold. Young man that just stood up, come up here. Y'all just keep singing very reverently, very quietly and respectfully. me. You want the Holy Spirit? Is that why you stood up? Man, you jumped up. Nobody else around you standing up. When you're that hungry, God sees you. I want you to know God notices you tonight. You know what it feels like to have God notice you? Sometimes I'll look at people and I'll smile at them and they're like, oh, she noticed me. But I'm nobody. Imagine when God looks at you. And he notices you. God has taken notice of you. And right now he's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Which, Jesse. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That you would fill Jesse with heaven's language. Shorabakanda stovaka. Now what you have to do when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, stay right here with me, Jesse. You got to open your mouth because that's the only way he wants. I feel tonight that everybody wants the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you what I also feel tonight in my spirit. I feel a tugging <laughs> that even those that are already serving God with all of their hearts, there's a new hunger. You're like, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Oh, I'm hungry. I feel a tugging like leaders and pastors they're hungry and even though they already know God and even though they're already full of God it's time for more and God's going to fill you tonight and God's going to fill you tonight with a new fresh fire when God brought the Israelites out of the wilderness, he said, the man has ceased. I'm not doing it that way anymore. I got a new fire. <laughs> God told me that this week. He said, Jade, I'm not doing it that way anymore. I got a new fire. And he said, and I'm putting it on you right here at Christ for the Nations. I said, come on with it. 
Because sometimes you are so full and you are so ready and you're doing everything you know and you're doing it the way you've always known and you're giving God your best. And he says, ooh, the man has ceased because you're pulling on a new part of me. You're ready for a new part. You're ready for something new. So I'm not doing it that way anymore. I'm, I got a fresh wind. So leaders and pastors, God's going to fill you tonight in a brand new way. Those of you that want that language, you got to open your mouth and close your eyes and just lift your hands however you can do it, however it means the most to you and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me now. Fill me now with your language, with your power, with your peace, with your love, with your gentleness, with your kindness, with your goodness, and with your self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. And say now, Holy Spirit, I want to speak your language. I want to speak your language. Close your eyes. Don't look at me and open your mouth and let God fill you tonight. In Jesus' name, Father, fill Jesse in the mighty name of Jesus with a new language. With a new language. So, Brock, that's it right there. That's it right there. That's it. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit, my friend. Stay right here and keep praying. That's it. That's it. Let it hit you. Come up here. This, this man right here on the third row. Woo, you're hungry. Glory, 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 glory. Fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. So rabakasarabaha with a new fire, a fresh fire. See rabakara, stir the water, stir the water, stir the water, stir the water, stir the water. So rabakara nderabakiri siriabaha. Stay right there and just receive what God's doing. So rabakasaraba. You want the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands, lift your hands. She came running up and just said, come on, Jesus. Open your mouth and let it come out. Open your mouth and let it come out. Go ahead and cry under the anointing. That's all right. Open up your mouth and let it come out. You can't keep your mouth closed. You got to open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. Woo, I see God moving on you. Come on, baby girl. Come on, I see the, I see you're hungry. Yeah, go ahead. You want the? He sees you. He sees you. He notices you. God, she doesn't just want the talk. She wants the whole life language. She doesn't just want the talk. She wants the whole life language. She wants the whole life language. She wants the whole life language. Yeah. She wants the whole life language. The whole life language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The whole life language. Fill them, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Now you got to open your mouth and let it come out. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let it come out. Open your mouth. Y'all come on close to the Lord. He, he, he wants you close. He don't want you backed off. He wants you close. Right there, right there. That's good. You see how God will just call you on his own? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Please don't look at me. I don't have anything for you. The spirit is what's going to move. Please don't look at me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Close your eyes and open your mouth and God will begin to move through you. That's it. So rabakas karandarabaha. Ze robokos korambari bikiriabaha. Breza rabakos korambari bikiribi. Zo za 
softly and let's sing Holy Spirit very reverently you are welcome here Just watch how God will move. Hands lifted, eyes closed.
he came up, I said, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? He said, I don't know. I say the answer is yes. sorry God now change me now change me <laughs> now change me now change me that's total arrest of the Holy Spirit lift your hands 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 close your eyes close your eyes thank you Holy Spirit Glory, glory, glory. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Don't watch. Don't look at me. Just let the Spirit of God move on you. Guys, you don't need me to have God move. He'll touch you right where you are. Lift your hands and tell God, I am hungry, God, for you. I am hungry, God. Touch me right where I am. Touch me right where I am because I am hungry. Touch me right where I am. Touch me right where I am. Touch me right where I am. 
touch me right where I am. Lift your hands. Lift your hands like this. Sing Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, it says he gives you power. And for those of you that are afraid or you're timid, God, and look at me, he's using you to do this. You're anointing the way you walked up here to the front, and you're just like, God, do your thing. I need you. I'm hungry. Is why this anointing is about to be released. It has nothing to do with me. God's using your boldness to break the timidity off of everybody in this room. Okay? So turn this way. Hold the mic. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say it loud. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Set. Set. People. People. Free. Free. Where they're afraid. Where they're afraid. Give them boldness. Give them boldness. Now say boldness. Boldness. Say boldness. 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 Father, I thank you that you're giving boldness, 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 boldness to your people. Boldness, boldness, God. Boldness, God, in the core of her being. Boldness, boldness, that you break fear off 
of her life. Break timidity off of her life. Tonight is the last night. Tonight was the last night you will ever be afraid again to do what God has called you to do. <laughs> she feels it. That's it. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Tonight's the last night. Sometimes we hold on to things and then God just breaks it and it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Boldness, boldness that this night marks her destiny. It marks her destiny. standing right here. Look at me. You will not be like all the men in this world. It's just not acceptable. But let me tell you, the only thing that changes you is the Spirit of God. And once you encounter Him, look at this guy right here. You can't even deny it. Come here. You didn't expect any of this either. You didn't expect to cry like a child. But when God comes on you, now nobody else come up unless I grab you, okay? He didn't expect this. He said, this isn't even like me. This is how you become a real man. Yes. This is how you become a real man. Touch him, Jesus. 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 Because you're different. Stir your the waters. Presence. Stir the waters, God. Let us experience. Stir the waters. The glory of Stir your his waters, goodness. God. Let us become more aware Jesus. of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become. Experience the 
not do this so we can just be emotional, although you're going to be emotional in God's presence. But God doesn't do this just to make a show, and he doesn't do it just to make you emotional. He does it so you have a touch that stays forever. And God is touching. God is touching his people so it will stay forever. So close your eyes, lift your hands to the mighty God and let God move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are in control. glasses. Will you come here? You don't have to. Staff, you may have to help him work his way up here. Lift your hands. Don't worry about him and don't worry about me. Let God touch you right where you are.
more time, lift your hands. just want everybody to be very quiet and very still. Very quiet and very still. Father, I thank you that we'd be very quiet and very still in the presence of God. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Very still. Very still. you that you are in control. Holy Spirit, that you are in control. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. That you've done a work in some of their lives, God, that will never, ever be undone. very real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching that young man in a very real way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now I want everybody to look up here for just a second, just one second, okay? I want 
you to understand what God is doing. Because for some of you, it's a little different and it's a little out there. But remember, God's kingdom is not like the kingdom of the earth. God's kingdom is very different and he operates in very unique ways. And sometimes um, some people may just do it because other people are doing it. But sometimes it's very real and it never goes away. And you are touched and branded by God, like when God touched me. And I know God is truly changing the lives of some of his children. That you will not grow up wounded souls because God is healing your wounds. You won't grow up wounded and act out of the wound and wound others, but God is actually healing wounds. And that's very real. And yes, some people do just do it, and some people do just go along with it. But some people, it's very real. And I feel that there's a few people in here wondering, is this even for real? What is this? I'm weirded out. And that's okay. And if that's you, I would actually ask you right now to close your eyes and don't worry about anything you see or anything you hear right now. But right where you are, nobody moving, nobody moving. Let's stay very still. Close your eyes. If you're doubting God and you're doubting what he's doing and you have a hard time with it, let God just touch you then. And don't worry about me. And don't worry about them. Let God touch you then. Close your eyes. And ask God to touch you. And say, God, if this is real, let me know. I don't care about who's on the floor and who the lady is up there acting crazy. But if you're for real, then show me. If you are real, then touch me. And watch him do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for what you're doing tonight and what you've done in the hearts of your people. 